Good afternoon, my name is Mr. Maurice Taylor, and today I will be speaking with you about the effectiveness of lesson planning, or planning a unit. Uh, over, my, over the course of three years here, I've been at Charles Hart Middle School, I have the uh, opportunity to witness firsthand several wonderful teachers in the classroom. Uh, <clears throat> I also had the opportunity to sit down with some of them here and there, not going in very depth conversations, but like in conversations we may have <clears throat> within passing, when it comes to lesson planning and what's their idea or their opinion about lesson plan. Uh, and for my personal opinion, just gathering opinions from everyone else, I think the most important piece is just planning ahead of time. Uh, when it comes to having an effective lesson plan or just an effective unit for the period uh, or term, I feel that it's great to plan ahead because you get to see like the loopholes that you may have in your lesson plans, uh, knowing exactly or just having an expectation where you kind of expect your kids to struggle with certain steps due to their prior knowledge or uh, prior skills you all may already have worked on throughout the year. Uh, and you would just have a better idea of how to execute the lesson plan because you already planned ahead of time. And so you have your expectations for yourself <clears throat> as a teacher and as the kids within your classroom environment. So, uh, with that being said, like I said, I just think that planning ahead of time is the best and most important thing. And when I say plan ahead of time, I mean probably at least try to have like a week or two out in advance. Uh, also, when you plan ahead of time, you get to see what part of the lesson or what part of the skills you may need to revisit. Uh, so when it comes to planning ahead of time, actually writing information out on the calendar. And for an example, you have on Wednesday, you're going to do lesson five. But on Monday or Tuesday, you all struggle with lesson four. <clears throat> then you know that on Wednesday, you may need to revisit lesson four and push other things back. So, uh, like I said, planning ahead of time is very great. Uh, also, during my planning period now, uh, because I don't have a co-teacher this year, I try to roam about the building, stop by other teachers' classroom, and see how the co-teaching model work especially when it comes to having differentiated instruction with students uh due to some classrooms are called inclusion which means they have a gen ed population with sped students or students with iep plans or 504 plans and just math goals that they need to reach uh, <clears throat> but another thing is that the, the benefit of planning ahead is being able to sit back and see how your lesson plans unfold just being able to see like where when you reteach this, where you as a teacher can be better at, where you as a teacher can dig deeper with your students to help them reach their mastery level, mastery level. Uh, so, I mean, I guess I keep going back to the same thing about how important it is just planning ahead of time. Uh, one thing I did when it comes to one thing I have worked on when it comes to effective lesson planning is just coming up with different strategies to check for understanding because uh, when it comes to teaching or just lesson planning, that to me is like the second most important piece just throughout the lesson while you're teaching, just continue to check for understanding. Uh, <clears throat> just observing and watching many teachers in the building, uh, one commonly used method to check for understanding is thumbs up, thumbs down, or thumbs in the middle. That way you don't have to, if you're not able to pretty much roam about the class. If you're stuck at the front of the classroom, you can just ask the kids, okay, thumbs up if, you, uh, if you're with me, if you understand what's going on, thumbs down if you're not, uh, thumbs to the side if you kind of confused or just in the middle. Uh, so, I mean, but there's also other methods I came about within the building and these other methods I have tried myself throughout the year. Uh, so, <clears throat> now that, I mean, so now I know that one thing for check with understanding uh, one of the great that's also one of the great things I have seen my mentor teacher do also is I mean a method he uses for checking for understanding checking for understanding just I mean just by having conversation with so many teachers uh, so many of the teachers who actually like veteran teachers they would tell you that they tend to check for understanding very very often not periodically uh, just by checking for understanding that allows you as a teacher to also know then should you proceed in your lesson or should you stop uh, and try to help those who are struggling at the time. 
Uh, I have saw my mentor teacher do this a lot uh, when I observed him teaching with the thumbs up, thumbs down method. This is a great way to gauge for whether students are in the lesson also. The main thing I do every day to check for understanding my classroom with my math uh, curriculum this year is I use exit tickets. The exit tickets are no more than about three to five questions uh, and some of them go very deep within explaining. Uh, so going back to having an effective lesson plan, uh, one thing I had to work on currently or this year is just making sure when my kids explain their answer using the mathematical vocabulary that we, we have talked about for the week. Uh, a lot of kids like to just give you a computation piece of the answer but not thoroughly explain themselves. So when it comes to me doing my lesson plan, uh, I kind of write down exactly how I want them to answer the question, like what format of the sentence, using what termino terminology for this particular answer. Not just allowing them to give me the math piece, like just solving the problem, but no, I need for you to thoroughly explain yourself. Uh, I use I use exit tickets, which are no more than, like I said, three to five course and check for understanding. But the exit tickets help also with the reflection piece. So once you go back to doing a lesson plan and you are pretty much trying to figure out what you can do to better the lesson the next time you teach it, if you need to reteach it, is going over the exit tickets with yourself, then going over them with the students and allowing them to see their mistakes that they made and how they can better themselves. But also when it comes to lesson planning, I figured out too that I need to try my best to get back or give them back those lesson tickets in a timely manner so they won't be waiting to see actually what they scored on the lesson plan. Uh, I know sometimes it can be hard for, for me to grade things on Monday and get it back to them by Tuesday or Wednesday sometimes. So just planning ahead of time gives me the, the freedom to know that, okay, well, if this is going to be an answer, now when I'm walking around the room while they're doing the extra tickets, I can pretty much gauge at their paper like, okay, you may need to work on this because this answer is not going to be acceptable. Because I already have an idea during during my lesson planning how they should answer that particular question. Uh, and also with the extra tickets, they tell me if I need to step back and possibly reteach that lesson again. So, uh, like I said, I could just, uh, you or myself, uh, any other teacher can possibly consider uh just how you should reteach a lesson or just during your lesson planning period figuring out what steps yourself or your students need to focus on more so when you uh are trying to execute your lesson plan you would just have a better idea of where you need to really really dive deeper and you know push the kids more for to get the best out of them you can get and that's pretty much it Thank you.